All right, hello everybody. This is Andrew Connell with Voitanos. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day today. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if someone would mind just raising your hand uh, in the Zoom client, just to let me know that you can that you can hear me. Uh, fantastic. All right, great. So thanks. Uh, I'll ask you to put your hands down and now go ahead and put them back up. Oh, there we go. Now put them back down. And you've done your SharePoint development exercises for the day. <clears throat> all right. So first of all, thank you very much for joining me for my first self-hosted webinar here at Voitanos. This is gonna be a nice brief webinar, uh, 30 minutes long. I am going to uh, start doing these. Uh, this is the debut one, but I'm gonna start doing these throughout the uh, entire year. Uh, I'm gonna do at least once a month, maybe some more frequently than that. Everything is always going to be recorded. Uh, I will also post the entire recording to the Voitanos blog. Uh, so you can, if you miss a recording, you can always get it there and see uh, what you may have missed. Um, but we'll cover different topics. We'll do a couple different State of the Unions uh, like this, where I'm just really covering the latest news. I may have, I'm going to get some people on to join me to uh, have a couple different interviews and, and talk about some of the hot topics of uh, SharePoint. Uh, development and specifically around the SharePoint framework uh, and uh, may even do some more of these like live ones when we do a um, uh, with, with video and stuff with a panel when we're happen to be at a conference and have a few people uh, with me. So we'll see how that goes. But I guarantee it's going to stick to 30 minutes. So here's how the logistics are going to work. Uh, I've got a, the chat open, which I will keep, I'll monitor uh, during the webinar, but we only got 30 minutes. So I'm going to try and keep it nice and streamlined. Um, also have a Q&A that will be going on as well. So if you want to ask a question, feel free to post it to the Q&A panel. I can't guarantee I'm going to get to all of them in the time that we have allotted. Um, I only have a few slides, but there is a lot of stuff that I do want to cover. Uh, there will be no demos. I really just want to share the news with you. But um, I will be, um, uh, I, if I don't get to your question during the webinar, I will most certainly copy it and put it as part of the uh, blog post that we put out uh, later today. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with this. Real quick introduction, who am I? My name is Andrew Connell. I'm an MVP for Office Servers and Services and Office Development. I really wish they would drop that second one or they could drop that second one. I'd actually like them to replace it with Azure uh, because I really don't do a whole lot with Office Server. Um, much more of a uh, just a developer guy and only for the cloud. Um, I am the, the guy behind Voitanos. So I am the, the single, I mean, we have other help as well, but I'm really the, the one that works on the content. I'm the one that publishes everything and all the materials and stuff that you uh, may have seen before. Um, Voitanos is my business that I have for doing SharePoint training or really any kind of training. Right now it's SharePoint training and the SharePoint framework. Um, I have a course on that around mastering the SharePoint framework, which you can take a look at if you go to voitanos.io. Um, but I uh, do plan on having additional courses as well on a bunch of different uh, developer related topics. And then I also co-host a weekly podcast called the Microsoft Cloud Show that you can check out as well. Just finished recording next week's interview or uh, episode with my co-host just a few minutes ago. Um, just a little bit more information. Uh, uh, well, sorry, let me, let's go ahead and cover what we're gonna cover today or let me talk about what we're gonna cover today. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the recent additions to the SharePoint framework, the latest news on the SharePoint framework, and then we're going to run through a roadmap uh, related to the SharePoint framework on what's coming, what's coming soon. I'm not going to break any news for you. I mean, this is going to be a lot of um, uh, a lot of this information is published. I'm just going to give you a little bit of thoughts and some stuff we've learned since then um, from Microsoft announcing certain things. Um, clearly, can't announce anything. If I do that, then I would be breaking some of my non-disclosure agreements that I have with Microsoft, but also uh, they are pretty open. So there's not a whole lot to, to share that hasn't already been shared. So let's first tackle what some of the latest additions or recent additions to the SharePoint framework have been. And I'm really going back to around uh, late last year, October-ish or so, and the last three months of 2017. Uh, we haven't gotten much this year so far. Uh, we're gonna get more in the next few weeks or few months. And you'll see where that is too when I talk about some of the changes they've done recently because Microsoft generally goes into a pretty good freeze um, over the course of uh, December and, and going into the first part of January because 
Well, it's holiday season for many people, and it is also when a lot of people take time off from work. So you have a lot of people that disappeared from um, uh, disappeared from uh, um, uh, from Microsoft going uh, out of office. Uh, you saw the same thing happen uh, with uh, people or just different country companies around the world where everyone was doing the same thing, or it was just taking time off from work. So. With that, they just you, they use, you just see these kind of these dependencies kind of change, or you see these uh, um, people are out of the office, and so they don't do a lot of rollouts to Office 365 or to products because number one, people don't see them. Number two, they don't really have the people on on staff that are there in case something doesn't go right. And three, that's eh, really going to be on deaf ears if nobody's around at the different companies where you're shipping it. So they go into pretty good freeze for most of December, and we're starting to see some updates coming out now in January. Uh, so what kinds of things that we've seen uh, released? Well, one of them is the asset packaging. So with this, uh, before we had asset packaging, when we built something with the SharePoint framework, we built our solutions, um, we had two different classifications of things we had to deploy. We deployed a package to SharePoint, which registered our application and which also um, was used to uh, install the application into our SharePoint sites, like a web part or an extension. And uh, we also had another classification of thing, which is the all of the assets that were required for that to run, like JavaScript files or CSS or, or manifest files. And all of those had to be deployed to some other location. And Microsoft always would tell us, you want to use a CDN for that. It wasn't required, but I mean, that's really where they kept pushing us. So what Microsoft, is, what they did here is that with asset packaging, um, they now give us the ability with a little flag inside of the, um, uh, of the uh, package-solution.json file that you'll find in your projects in the config folder. And what that does is that when you build your project, uh, the build process, the build tool chain and packaging tool chain, what that will do is that will take those web assets uh, and instead of just expecting you to deploy them to an Azure CDN or an Office 365 CDN or uh, some other CDN or some other public location, they will now pull those together and they will include those uh, in the package that's deployed to SharePoint. Then provided your SharePoint uh, environment, your SharePoint online environment is configured uh, for a CDN, for a public CDN, uh, you'll have an additional folder in every single one of your site collections uh, called client assets, and when you're when you install that package to your SharePoint site collection, all those web assets will be pulled out of the package and deployed to that client assets folder or or library. Um, client assets it works similar, or it's it kind of sits parallel to where the master page gallery is or where the style library is. It's just a new library, and then if you have the CDN enabled, then what's nice about that is that all your files will be served up from the Office 365 CDN. So it makes our deployment process a lot cleaner. And speaking of making our deployment process cleaner, we also have new ALM REST APIs. Now, the documentation on these is a little weak, uh, in my opinion. But what these are going to allow us to do is that it's easier to understand what we what we did in the before, what we couldn't do, and what these solve. What we did before is that whenever we had something we wanted to install and deploy into our SharePoint environment, we had to um, manually use the browser to upload the SharePoint package, to manually um, approve it or deploy the package and trust it, and then to manually go install the package in our SharePoint um, sites. What this is allowing us to do, and then do the inverse of all those operations. What these ALM REST APIs are gonna allow us to do is now programmatically, we can control this upload and install and upgrade and all the inverse actions as well uh, for all of, our, all of our packages that we deploy to SharePoint. Um, what's nice about this then is that we can create re very true and clean um, ALM based uh, and, and ALM or, or continuous integration and integration and continuous deployment um, processes uh, in our applications now. So these are really cool. We're going to be able to do this. It makes life a heck of a lot easier. Um, in addition to this, we also have um, two community projects. Both are under the PNP. Uh, label. One is the SharePoint PNP PowerShell commandlets, and the other one is the Office 365 CLI uh, commands. Forgot a little bit there, so I'll just go ahead and add that. What that does, or what those what that um, those two sets of uh, projects, 
is that they allow us to not have to use or they enable us to use the command line to deploy our, our, our applications, to install them and all of that stuff. It makes our uh, management of our applications and our environments a lot easier. Um, the PowerShell commandlets are available on a Windows platform and the Office 365 CLI commands are available cross-platform on Win because they're all based on uh, Node, they all run in Node, so you install them using NPM, whether you're on Mac, Windows, or um, uh, Linux, you can, you can take advantage of these. I'm a big fan of the Office 365 CLI. Um, another thing that Microsoft did, which we are you know, familiar with this already, I would assume, uh, that went live back in, uh, let's see, went live back in um, uh, September, is the JavaScript embedding support. We got support for extensions. These are application customizers, field customizers, and command sets. Um, application customizers is very similar to the script link control we had in previous development models, uh, as well as the uh, delegate controls, if you want to loosely make the analogy. And then the other thing with um, that, that we got is with the field customizers, those are like the JS link controls that we got. Uh, JS, the, the field customizers are only available to us, though, for read experiences. They're not there for, for write experiences yet. Uh, we'll see, though, because it, Microsoft has said that, that, that they are working on that, and that's coming. Um, just don't see on the roadmap, so we'll see when it's coming. And then the other big news that we got late last year was that SharePoint Server 2016 now supports the SharePoint framework if you install Feature Pack 2. Just keep in mind, developers, that this is going to be the SharePoint Framework version 1.1, uh, not so much a um, uh, not so much a uh, uh, the latest version of the SharePoint Framework. Um, they have not talked about future releases or updates to the SharePoint Framework on prem. So things like extensions and these ALM REST APIs and the asset packaging, those aren't available in 1.1. Those are all came to be available at at least 1.3 or higher. So when are they coming? We don't know. Uh, Raymond's got a question here, but the documentation is a little confusing around the ALM APIs, mainly focusing on non-tenant scoped apps. What's my experience of using tenant scoped solutions with these? For example, in my experience, I take it, you don't need to publish a tenant scoped solution. Uh, Raymond, to be honest, I haven't, uh, I have not tried it with a tenant scoped solution where I deploy something to my tenant app catalog and then install it and say it's available everywhere. Um, in fact, that's what I'm doing this week because I'm in the middle of doing a bunch of updates to the deployment chapter of my course to an ALM APIs uh, is one of those things that I'm, actually, that I'm gonna be covering. So I don't have an answer for you right now. I will hopefully have an answer for you in, well, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow because I plan on recording on Thursday. So sorry, I don't have a, a, an answer for you. Um, Okay, so that's some of the stuff that we had the recent additions to the SharePoint framework. Let's talk a little bit, if I can get my slides to move, let's talk about some of the latest news or what's, what's it's kind of what's coming, but it's also, I wanna talk about like, you know, what's going on right now. Um, Microsoft has talked about in some of these, uh, the PNP uh, biweekly call for the JavaScript and SharePoint framework special interest group that they host. Um, they've talked about support for calling secured web services. And we are, this, they, they teased this at the um, Ignite conference last year, and they, have, they did a demo of it uh, two, of, two um, meetings ago at the special interest group. Um, the, my uh, fellow MVP, Paolo, uh, Paolo is, uh, presented, uh, presented on it as well. It's still very early. It's not even in a dev preview yet. Um, but basically what you're going to be able to do is to think of it as like whitelisting a API, a REST API that you want to talk to, but that REST API is secured. Um, trying to authenticate and, and call it from the client side is not a great experience. You're going to require your users to log in, have another pop-up box that shows up using something like ADAL, which is not, not all that ideal. Um, there are other ways you can do it, but what we're going to see is a way to effectively give uh, the graph permissions to call your application, the Microsoft graph, to call your, your secured web service that you control. And it, you would then have your SharePoint framework project 
would then be able to call the graph and say, go call that on my behalf. Uh, if you're familiar with doing add-ins, this is similar to those like whitelisted uh, remote uh, method calls that we could do. Um, so we're still waiting to see exactly how this works. Uh, my understanding is that it was supposed to ship in January, but they've kind of run into some things they need to address. Um, a lot of people get disappointed by that stuff, but I mean, hey, at least they're, they're sharing this stuff in the open, so you can't really complain too, too much. Another thing that you'll find, that's, but anyway, that's gonna be a really big deal. Um, in fact, I'm holding off on building a chapter on calling third-party web services until that's done, um, because I definitely want that to be in it. Um, multiple bugs fixed in the January updates. So I've got a couple um, references to some GitHub issues, but Microsoft has been, um, they have a couple of things that they're actually, they're fixing with the SharePoint framework and uh, of some known things. Like um, one that I reported was the site collection app catalogs. Um, if you go make a change to something that is uh, provisioning assets, um, the the features are not being updated, um, and you're not being you're not only not being updated, but you're not even notified that there's a new version available. So that's supposed to get fixed um, this month. The ALM APIs uh, when you would install an app and deploy it, which basically the deployment process essentially you blessing it and saying yes, this can be used. Uh, it wasn't trusting them. I uh, wasn't trusting the apps. So this is gonna fix that. Uh, and then finally, there was another issue where we had these new tenant scope properties, which I could have mentioned on the last slide. These, you get to these tenant scope properties via a REST API. Um, they were not available to guest users or external users within your SharePoint Online environment. So these issues um, have all been reported. They've all been tracked as real issues or, or accepted uh, bugs and, um, uh, GitHub on the GitHub issues list, the uh, SP Dev Docs repository on it's was it GitHub.com slash SharePoint slash SP Dev Docs. Um, there's hyphens between the SP Dev Docs. It's SP dash Dev dash Docs. These are uh, all of these have been said that they are going to get fixed, and the fixes were finished. They just weren't rolled out into production. They were holding on them until January. So we should see these updates either be applied now or they're being applied. And then the other big thing is, I mentioned it earlier, is the Office 365 CLI. This, you know, just from, in my two cents, it's a little disappointing that this, the way that this was announced because it came out on the Office dev blog um, and it looked like it was a, a product from Microsoft, even, but under the PMP group. And it really isn't. I mean, this is a, this is a thing that, um, well, I, I was involved in it at the beginning as well, but I, honestly, I, I bit off more than I could chew. And I was like, you know, I, I got to step back. I got to work on a course. So uh, Waldet MasterCards has really taken the, the the bull by the horns on this one. And he is, he's the, the single biggest contributor um, pushing this out. Um, I've contributed a couple commands around the site app, uh, uh, site collection app catalogs uh, for enabling and disabling it. But um, th he's, he's really the man on this. He's done a really good job with this. What's really nice about this, the goal with this is that it is, we want it to be feature equivalent, not only to what the PNP PowerShell, SharePoint PowerShell is, but also the SharePoint Online PowerShell from Microsoft. Uh, we want to be able to do everything that those guys can do so that we have a true CLI that you can use cross-platform. Got a really good numbers from this. I think Waldeck uh, said something recently where they've got um, about 48% of the people who have downloaded this are on Mac and 48% of the people who've downloaded this are on Windows. I'm just a big fan because, it, because it's a, it, the CLI approach is very friendly to scripting. Um, the other day there was some, I listened to this JavaScript special interest group from last week and they said that um, it's not as friendly for scripting. I, I don't buy that. I think the CLI is just as friendly for scripting as uh, PowerShell is. Um, in fact, I think it's more friendly because you can, with the, um, the 365 CLI, you can tell it you wanna get JSON back and you can parse that in your own results. So I'm a big fan of it. And it also follows the rest of the model like what we see over on the Azure world where Azure has a CLI. Um, and you can even use this Office 365 CLI in the Azure um, uh, Cloud Shell. All right, next thing, let's talk roadmap in the last 10 or so minutes we've got here. So in the roadmap, these are the published items. I will give you a little bit of commentary on each one um, because I've got a little bit of background in some of these. 
Um, some of them, we still are kind of waiting to see some details. It looks like just some bullet points that were thrown on a screen and we've yet to get much detail around it. The Graph HTTP client is currently in preview, but it should be shipping in GA uh, relatively soon. My understanding is that <clears throat> we may see it this month, we may see it next month. Um, but what this is, is that just like we have a SP HTTP client for calling SharePoint RESTful services, the Graph HTTP client is intended to make our life easier to call the Microsoft Graph. We are also supposed to be getting site level webhooks. And I'll be honest, I think that all of these are, are events that happen at the site level, like list creation or site creation, maybe site creation, I'm not sure. But uh, really, I think that these are all of the remote event receivers that we don't have right now uh, from the previous uh, SharePoint um, development models. Microsoft has also said for a while now, they've said for quite a while that the, they're going to be bringing um, SharePoint framework to the, Share, to the Office 365 store and to make it easier for us to acquire solutions from the store. Uh, they have this on their roadmap, but I've yet to see anything in any of the, the bi-weekly meetings uh, where this is discussed. So I don't know really how soon this really is. This next one though, part-to-part -part communication. Um, web, this is really gonna give us the ability to do web part connections. And the interesting thing about this is the code is already in the SharePoint framework to do this. But it hasn't been really pushed too hard or disclosed. Um, I was able to play with this back in March of last year at a dev kitchen. And there wasn't a whole lot extra work that it seemed like they had to do with this. Um, but they included it as part of like a preview release. And then I didn't really see them go forward with it much. So uh, I'm not entirely sure how far away these are or why they're still sitting on it, but they do plan on shipping this relatively soon. Or I think relatively soon, I, sh I shouldn't say that. I have not, they have not committed to a time on that. Um, another thing that they wanna do is they wanna bring the add-ins, the SharePoint add-ins, they wanna bring that to the SharePoint framework in modern pages. And what I mean by that is that they want to make the, right now with add-ins when you include an add-in on a SharePoint framework on a SharePoint page, it's included as an iframe. And what they want to do is they want to change that model to where it's more div based, the way that we do things in the SharePoint framework, which makes it more responsive. It makes it a little more friendly. Um, just work. Just generally is supposed to. It just works in a better a better way. Um, and they want to make it easier for us to um, communicate with these things from our SharePoint framework-based solutions. The last thing I want to cover here is the is the developer experience. Um, they are working on an updated workbench and this is supposed to give us local development and testing capabilities for extensions. This is, includes app customizers, it includes uh, command sets and field customizers. Um, when I first saw extensions, this was the first thing I asked for. I was like, the work you can't use the workbench for this? And they're like, that's okay, yeah, 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 we're thinking about it. It's like, thinking about it, this has gotta be a, like a, a minimum requirement. And of course, then they came out and it wasn't there. And so in, in the GA, so now we're, you know, they, we kind of pushed on them and thankfully we got a user voice uh, thing that's got a lot of votes. And we are now expected to, to get an updated workbench that'll cover these things. Uh, the Yeoman templates, we're supposed to be getting additional or new Yeoman templates. Now, what are these going to be for? Don't know yet. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe they're going to do additional web frameworks. Maybe we're going to see Vue, uh, Vue.js. Maybe we're going to see one for Angular elements when that, sh when that finally ships uh, over the next few months. Um, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing with the Yeoman templates. I really wish that the SharePoint team would publish the Yeoman generator uh, code so that in a public way so that we can submit pull requests because there's a lot of stuff. I'm dying to, to get that readme updated um, with all those you know stupid to-do messages uh, on it. Um, really needs to be cleaned up. And then this last one, I, I'm mentioning it because it's on their roadmap. Tool chain components. I don't have a clue what this is. They haven't talked about this at all. Uh, they just say toolchain components around developer experience. So um, this is me just being the messenger. I can't give you too much additional detail um, on this. 
so, hey, I, if you got any questions, now's a great time to ask them. About five minutes left in our webinar here. Uh, I do want to throw kind of what you can, what you would expect over the next few months, and then just share a little bit of additional detail here too. Um, so again, this is this webinar is brought to you by Voitanos. Uh, if you are interested in the SharePoint framework, I've got a couple free resources for you. First, staying on top of the latest SharePoint development news that's out there, it's hard for me to do it. Um, but I am able, I, I spend a little bit of time um, every two days looking at all the news that came from Microsoft, looking at all the news that came from other places, and I create a, uh, curate the news and I send it out as a newsletter. Um, if you're interested, you go to voitanos.io, scroll to the bottom of the page, and you'll see where you can sign up for that. I also have a 10-day free email course on understanding the SharePoint development tool chain. Got some changes actually to that um, course that I'm working on and that I'm gonna add uh, in the next month or so. And then I also have a developer course, video-based course that you can uh, sign up for as well if you're interested. Uh, last week we did the first live delivery. I see one or two people um, here in the, the uh, attendance here that were actually with me last week. Um, we sat down today, took a little, we figured out some stuff that we wanna make some changes to it. I'm gonna send out a survey to all my attendees from last week and get their feedback and make some adjustments as well. Um, but they're all, uh, I'm gonna let them know, uh, or we'll go through and publish another date here where people can jump in um, and see what else is new with the SharePoint framework uh, in that course. I've also got a couple of links here. If you can find me, uh, please feel free, send me a tweet or go check out my blog at andrewconnell.com. Um, at Voitanos, if you got any questions, follow us on on, twi on Twitter. You can see us, our, our link to our site is there as well. And then the podcast um, that I have as well is, is listed here. The Microsoft Cloud Show um, is uh, also available here. Uh, if you're interested in like a hands-on kind of learning of the SharePoint framework, I am teaching my uh, Mastering the SharePoint Framework course. I'm teaching it live in person in I think it's March the 1st in Branson, Missouri at the North American Collaboration Conference. Uh, if you're interested, check that out. And I'm also going to be doing it, um, I th I'm gonna be doing it at the uh, SP Fest Conference in Washington, DC uh, in March as well. Um, I believe I'm doing it too at the, Nor at the uh, SharePoint Conference North America in Las Vegas in May. Um, so as a pre-conference workshop as well, if you're interested. So with that, that's everything I wanted to cover for the day. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to go ahead and post them in the QA panel here. Um, I don't have any unanswered questions, but um, more, we've got another two minutes here. I'd be respectful of your time. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for taking 30 minutes out of your day to join me. Um, I am curious uh, if you go ahead and feel free to post it in the QA panel, feel free to post it in the chat. How do you like a 30 minute webinar? Um, Nice, I like it because it's nice bite size. It's easy for me to do this for you, but it's, I find it also easy to consume it um, uh, in your day-to-day -day jobs. And so it's easier to kind of do more of these more frequently and to push stuff out. Cool little demos, cool, cool little topics, maybe previews on upcoming conferences, um, reviews on recent conferences and events, et cetera. So really curious to hear your thoughts on how you like it or if you have any um, ideas on topics you'd like to see covered and, and things like these or any kind of a theme or something, uh, feel free to shoot them my way. So I'm gonna let this just stay open for another minute or so because I'm waiting to see if anybody else uh, has a question they would like to post. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So if anybody has any questions you didn't get answered, oh, uh, uh, Matthias. Uh, Matthias is asking about, um, well, first, do you really like this format? So that's awesome. Uh, please tweet that. <laughs> um, any thoughts on using Redux with the SharePoint framework? So using React and Redux to the SharePoint framework. Um, React or Redux is a good like state management uh, kind of thing with, uh, with, with um, that you would use with React or actually you can use it with Angular as well. Um, if you have a, a complicated client-side solution 
like if you're building a single page app, then I think that it does make sense. I think it, it works really well. The, the thing about it though, that I'm a little, that I hedge on a little bit with it is that today we don't really have a good model for doing single page apps in the SharePoint framework. Um, they're really just web parts. And if you're doing a really complicated web part, that's kind of where I would take a step back and go, does it make sense to build it like this? Um, to be honest, I am a little bit more of a fan of using something like a SharePoint hosted add-in um, to build a single page app because I can control the entire experience. And in that case, yeah, Redux makes a lot of sense with, uh, because then you're using different web frameworks or like React or Angular or something like that. So it makes a lot more sense there, but um, it's a little, I, I think it's more, not so much, um, not so much of doing React, not so much using Redux, it's more or less, am I using, you know, am I building a single page app or so? Um, I did get a question here for from uh, Darlene uh, asking for recommendations for learning React JS for SharePoint. Um, this is tough because there's a ton of resources that are out there. Uh, I will tell you, I do have a chapter that I am um, uh, I am planning. It's not in the current sprint that I'm working on, but it'll be in the next sprint that I'm working on. So my sprints usually last about two or three weeks. Um, but uh, React is going to be probably the first web framework that I tackle uh, of all the web frameworks that's going to be included in the course. So I, my course of uh, mastering the SharePoint framework will have a, a React kind of primer um, enough to start being productive and using React in the SharePoint framework. If you really want to get into React, I'm not going to be able to cover it, you know, in, in a ton of depth. Um, so what I'm going to end up doing is um, I would recommend at least in the, in the, for the time being to either to go to one of the other online resources and learning React. Um, I'm a fan of a couple courses over on Udemy, um, but they're like 36 hours or 30 plus hours or something. They're really good, but they're really long. Uh, so uh, yeah, I do, but it's, it's, if you, if you're, if you can wait just a little bit, I mean, I'm going to have it in the class uh, if you're a subscriber to my course. Um, so one is, I will have some stuff that's coming. I'm going to at least, I'm going to try and cover, well, I'm going to cover uh, React. I'm going to cover Vue. I'm going to cover jQuery. Uh, I'm going to cover, and I'll cover the Angular as well when Angular Elements comes out. Um, the other web frameworks, I recently did a survey and I was really surprised to see um, a lot of people just don't care about Knockout and AngularJS anymore. Um, so I'm still trying to decide exactly what I'm going to do there. I found that to be interesting, but, uh, definitely just, if you take a look at some of the more popular react classes, uh, I'm trying to remember what the guy's name is. I want to say it's Andrew Mead, M E A D, but all right. So with that, that's everything I wanted to cover today. And we've gone a couple minutes over I'm going to be respectful of your time. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you have any other questions I didn't get answered here, when you see this get posted to the Voitano's blog, please feel free to drop a comment. I'll be more than happy um, to follow up to those comments uh, on the Voitano's blog. So with that, I hope everyone has a great day. Until the next webinar.